So today we are going to start with our first section of the prospect and we shall begin with the rules law. So in the prosthetics, we shall be looking at what we call static charges. Charges that are not moving. So we are not going to be. Once these charges start moving, for example, if we have electrons moving, the conductor, then we transform from static charges to current electricity. So we, we no longer talk of electrostatics, but we talk of current electricity. So for this section, we shall be looking at basically the, the static charges. And are we talking about individual charges in the vicinity or in a given area? Or are we going to talk about charges which are in a way along a given distribution? That's why we talked of how we shall be talking about discrete harmony. And for these discrete ones, we shall be using this solution. And when we sprinkle these charges in a continuous form, like along a line, along a surface, or in a volume, then we talk of continuous. And when we make them continuous, we stretch this kind of discreteness and we, have, we start using a mirror. We use summation for this bit, and then when we straighten it, we go to the uh, mirror. So, we shall be summing up the total effect of these individual charges when we are talking about this with the uh, form of them, and then we shall transform or we shall transit towards integrating when they become a little bit continuous. So, in the same, at the same time, in this course, we shall be more talking about a test charge. Or in electricity and magnesium, we talk of a test charge. It's just because we are using it to test a couple of things. And then, just like we, we were used to a particle, we were much used to a particle in a, classical mechanics, even when we are talking of a particle of 100 kilograms. Can that be a particle in the sense of the definition of the particle? No. A particle by definition in the, in the uh, dictionary is something which is very small. But now we talk of 100 kilograms as a particle. Similarly, we shall be talking of a point Charge. When we talk of a point charge, by literal meaning, one would think that this is a very point charge, it's like a dot. But then you find we are talking of a bunch of uh, microcurls, meaning that it's a technology we are using for purposes of our convenience. So the force on a given charge, by introduction of another charge, will be related similar to the way we looked at the gravitational force. So that now when we are talking of the electric force, we instead talk of the charge magnitudes and still talk of the distance between them. So relative to the, uh, uh, the masses, we shall be talking about the charge on left and then because the charge on left is actually the cause of its either repulsion or of attraction. If you have two like charges, negative negative, they will repel each other. That's why the wives do not like each other. If you have if they are positive, the same effect. You do not like if, if uh, one of you guys was seated on me and the other time, you won't just like him because he's seated there. So you kind of have that and You don't agree on the same things at the same time. Any questions? Okay, so let's say that uh, 
the force on the coin chair is going to be now that the things are already on, online and because I may, I may want us to rush and finish our course early, uh, I'll be a bit speedier. Unlike the speed I had in uh, Glasgow or in uh, electronics, now I'm a bit speedier because I've taught this course for a long time. So you have to push in a little bit of effort. Once in a while, you can have a, a group of two or three, sit on a laptop and watch this 45, 40, 45, 50, less than an hour. And then when either after I have told and you just wanted to see how I said something, and you can jump. You don't have to follow it from the beginning. So the force on a point change. Force on the point charge. Capital Q due to a single point charge or two. Just you could have used Q1 and Q2. But I'm just using capital Q and small Q to be these two charges, which is at rest to take care of the concept of static charges. A distance R away in free space. is given by so in other words we talk of free space because if we were to have an electric charge in that vicinity then we would have an effect on this charge so this force uh, would be given by uh, the product of these two charges divided by 4 pi epsilon of r squared. So I have to do. So, but as I told you at the beginning, the difference between what you studied in high school and what we do here is that we take care of more, we are more interested in the uh, direction of what we are dealing with. So this force would be the same as this and then we use an other roof to show that it is along the direction from one or the radio if you were to take the, one of the charges start the Q be for example the set along the circle and the other one is along uh, the uh, surface of the sphere or circle involving the field of capital Q then you would have the R as the radius from the center to the, so it would be along the R. And we can basically say that uh, diagrammatically, if we have our child small q here, and then we have along this line our capital Q there, having the distance between them being R, then the force which we are talking about F is along this R. So this is the vector from Q to capital Q. So that is for when we are looking at two point charges, capital Q and small Q. But let's make them have the magnitudes that are easy to differentiate and have Q1 and Q2. So if we have uh, charges Q1 and Q2 uh, at the distance R, but now we need to be very, uh, make it more uh, understandable. So since we are talking about charges Q1 and Q2, 
at a distance R. Still, we need to know these alloys from where to where. So, for each magnitude, we will be talking about R12. So, the, the distance between charge Q1 and Q2. That's what we are using as R1, R12. And definitely at the end of the day, when we are now um, looking at this and this one, it means now we shall be talking about the charge, the force would be either one to two, that is the force on two due to one. We shall see how to interpret them. And then also we can talk of F12 or F21. And then here we shall be talking of either R12 or R21 squared, but fortunately this one doesn't matter. The distance between 1 and 2, or 2 and 1, is the magnitude when we square it. And uh, since because it will be R, R12 dot R12, R2, R12 dot R21, and when you dot them, A dot B is the same as B dot, but so there is no problem. So, but here we shall be talking of the unit direction vector from 1 to 2, or from charge 2 to 1. So we shall meet new terminologies, new uh, symbolism from 1 to 2 or from charge 2 to 1. So I just want to make sure that we are not writing these uh, symbols, you are not uh, lost. So I will just draw it not to just make it look a bit palatable and to show that it is in space. Because if I keep drawing these diagrams in a straight line, you may think they are supposed to be always along the X, uh, axis, or whatever you would call it. But I'm just drawing it in this line here to make sure that. So the force. On Q2 due to Q1 is given by anyone who can give us a try on this. When we talk of the force on Q2 due to Q1, it will be a long way. It will be the force on Q2 due to Q1, it means if this was, uh, if both of them were positive or negative, definitely this one would be pushing the other on the other side. Okay? So we are talking about of the force on Q2 due to Q1, that means it will be along that direction. So if we take them to be positive, so that means this force will be the same as their magnitudes, which is Q1, Q2, and then we divide by our normal business, but since we didn't know much about the four part of side and I can remain with the uh, proportionality constant, uh, K, for now. And then the distance now we are talking about is the distance from charge 1 to charge 2, so it will be R12 square, and then on the other side we shall be talking of the vector, uh, the uh, unit direction vector. Remember this is unit direction vector. I don't want it to repeat uh, myself. Uh, although I did not emphasize it so much in uh, classical mechanics, for every vector A, it can be denoted by A, denoted by A, denoted by A, denoted by wave there, and arrow there, but I prefer an A with a single half arrow 
Aleta as my preferred Victorio Mokeshi. You can put the arrow, you can put the wave, but you know, when you put that, either I take you to be rebellious, or you normally don't attend. But if you are, if you are so consistent that in all the paper, the whole paper you are able to use the double arrow, fine. But I would be glad if this doesn't hurt, just put a line and have on top. You don't need to hustle. Just put that on a given N, on a given electric field energy, on a given F, on a given B, on a given D, on a given H, and I'll be glad that you were following. But of course, that is not the... When you go to Griff, you find when they are bold. Almost all textbooks bold when the vector. And I cannot bold everything here. By the time I finish the course, I'll be tired. So I just thought I would say that. And then all the direction vectors in the book, you find that they are, they are bolded with an arrow on top. Sometimes not bolded with an arrow on the bottom and an arrow on the top. But I cannot, I cannot have an arc, then put a vector, and then make it a unidirection vector. So for that matter, a unidirection vector would be, in other words, what we talk of the unidirection vector would mean if it is if we have our three our three D or material planet uh, X Y Z then the unit direction vector would be either Z Y move X move or if you are still interested in the I J K would be having the J roof, the I roof, and the K roof. Some people call it hard. So if you are listening, to, for example, Walter Lewin and he says, other a hard, you don't say that this man has been talking of roof. It's the uh, notation of this. This man was in the so yeah, it's bringing the new dimension. But this since F, so okay, uh, you are saying, how do I read this? This one here, in terms of force on due to. How would you say this? And it goes on two, one, you two, two. Okay, so <laughs> we need to agree uh, on uh, how to denote, uh, how to, to read this. Uh, and then, first, how would we read this one? Should it be force on Q2 due to Q1 or force on Q1 due to Q2? Okay, let's see. So you are saying we should say one two, since we are having the one two here. That's what you are saying. Okay. I have no problem. Does, is it okay? Yes. 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 But now the change is the same. Now it's on Q1. Force on Q1. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we are looking at. Okay. I don't know how you want me to say it. Force on Q1. This is the statement. Force on Q2, due to Q1, and then I have F12, KQ1, Q2, uh, 1, 2, and then I will have 
this is the direction of the force which will be R proof quantum. Is it okay? <laughs> I, I don't know why, why you... The, the most important thing is not about... I'm not going to ask you that F12 is equal to or it's writing in words. I'm not going to do that. But the idea is it's, it's always confusing. And when, it, uh, when we go to the uh, dramatic induction, when we are talking about the mutual inductance of coil 1 due to coil 2 or coil 2 due to coil 1, also it will be a bit confusing. But it shouldn't be confusing at all. If you leave the statement alone and first look at what you are looking at here is you are looking at the force from Q2 due to Q1. Or you can say the force of Q1 on Q2. I don't know whether it makes sense. You can say Emmanuel is taller than who is a short person. So that but again you can say X is or can say, I think, uh, okay, to store the name of God. You can say, everybody is short at that. Okay. I don't know whether, and I'm taking too much time on this to make sure that we have the basics at the beginning. So, and then we say that. Uh, And the force on Q1 due to Q2 is given by so I am now going to change them. Which is F21 is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R21 ah, sorry, squared and then R21 Of course, where the constant I wrote about is the same as anyone knows it in your head 1 over 4 pi of Cylon R, which is equal to 1 over 4 pi times 8.85 times 10 to the power negative 12. And if you take it up, you get 9. And what are the units? What are the units of K? I always prefer to derive them. So we got the modem equal to k, and then you have a blue square, and then divided by a meter square. Is that all? And then you get your k equal to m m squared over c. So that means it will be mirror meter uh, squared per. Akuru square. Neuron meta square. Akuru square. And the uh, epsilon nut is something we shall deal with uh, very frequently in this course is the permanente. Permittivity of free space and uh, given by 8.85 times 10 to the power negative 12. What are its units? The units of K are neurons, meta squared per guru squared. What would be the units of epsilon naught? It 
will now be a Newton per meter square Coulomb square. So per Newton per meter square per Coulomb square. You don't need to cram anything. Everything is derived from from each of these. Pardon? Any problem here? Ah, Kulu square. When the other thing becomes positive, Kulu becomes negative. Now, of course, this was just a reminder. A reminder of Kulu's law. We are not going to use Kulu's law so much in this course. I'm not sure whether you will even get question about Kuru's law, but this is just to remind you, and uh, so that when we are using this concept of Kuru's law, you are able to understand. Now, if you have a bunch of, this we are only two charges, we started with two point charges, capital Q, small Q, and got the Kuru's law. After getting the Kuru's law, we now got two charges of some magnitude, no longer point charges. Point charge means we are talking of unit charge. Uh, one group, one micro group, or whatever, the other one group, depending on what charge you are using, which is unit. But when we say Q1 and Q2, we are now looking at the magnitude could be unit. Now, what if we got a bunch of these many charges with different magnitudes? How do we get to look for either the total force um, due to them or what would be now the effective electric field intensity in that kind of region or what would be the uh, potential in such a region? And uh, we can only get this by applying what we call the principle of we did, we did, did we have such a thing in uh, uh, point? Something like that. But this is not the same thing. So if we cannot get, if when you are here, when you are in this room, your, your performance not your performance, but your, your concentration, your understanding could be misconstrued as the sound understanding by each of you. But well, that can't really give me a good idea. Uh, if, you, if we look at individual charges, and then they are affecting each other. One is negative, attracting the other one. Another one is positive, is telling the fellow uh, positive. The force at the end of the day will be the sound effect of the forces of each of these individual charges. So the electrostatic force, the electrostatic force on the charge Q naught. We are using Q naught to make sure that we return from the one delta account due to a distribution of point charges. The word distribution in this course means a, a group. So that is all. Distribution of charges is a group of charges. So distribution of point charges. And we, if we, we are take this group QI, where I is an integer, uh, ranging from 1 to up to about n of them. And also these charges being at uh, position, at position, positions. R, I, 
from the Fine Church. From the Fine Church, Kuna. It's a vector sum. It's a vector sum. Exactly individually. Exactly. Individually on the Q map. So if we began by looking at a uh, discrete distribution, that is with a common number of point charges. So we say for a discrete distribution of charge, So if we got our Q to not yet, we have a bunch of the uh, charges Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Then we can talk of the uh, the, the other eye is uh, are all these distances. So, for example, this would be R R one Z. Okay. This is because we are looking at the force of these charges on Q now. So, for example, this distance here or this position would be R one zero, and then we can um, we can get the force. The force on this charge, the force F, will be the same as or is given by F is equal to the sum from I is equal to 1 up to N. And then we have our constant of, and then we have Q naught, Q I, over R, I of nine squared, then R of I naught. Where, we already said that K is equal to one over four pi. So we can now substitute for i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3 in all of the uh, in all our for all our charges. And thus we will get that uh, our f is equal to summation i is equal to 1 up to n. So I can, uh, since I'm going to sum them up, and I can say that uh, each one will be so. We shall be having F1 equal to P0, Q1 of I1, so R1, 0, 1, 0, 2, up to 4. This is going to 4 of them. So I can say this is equal to Q naught, which is common to all of them, over 4 epsilon naught, in Q1, uh, Q1 over R10 squared, and then R10 roof, plus Q2 over R20 squared, R20 roof, plus Q3 over R30 squared, R30 root, plus Q4 over R40 squared, R40 root. And since we 
discount, I consider in four of them, you can put a note to that. But if they were to be a bunch of uh, infinite number of charges, we will go new and go out. Actually, we can write this as being Q not E to E, where E is known as the electric density which you did in your crystal magnetic. Where E will be the same as the one over four pi side of not summation i is equal to one up to n q i over r i r i where e so i can say e and this e p here is called the electric field and a point and a position P or you can just say at position So this is for when the coin was child distribution. The force has that in this. But I just added this to show you how you can extrapolate and actually come out with uh, the, uh, the other part, the description of the other part, which is electrically lens. This was for discrete distribution of uh, how about if we have a child spring or a given either on the line or along the surface or over a given volume? So we will talk about a volume, I mean a continuous distribution of the child. So for continuous Distribution and then 
we can now integrate. Once we know, for example, when you are using trapezoidal rule, you would make one line and then integrate and you are able to get your whole figure. Remember in mathematics? Same thing we shall do here. And then when we have the surface, we take a surface, and this will be our DL, and then for a surface we shall be talking of our DS. But uh, then we talk of this as having a charge density lambda, and this one having a charge density sigma. When we make it sort of, uh, no, I can shade it just to let uh, you see it is a, like if you talk of an overhead or, or whatever, make sure that there is that kind of distribution of charge. Then you talk of a volume, so you cut out a piece with dimension so that you are able to so here we talk of tau. When we are talking about the total volume, with the mean volume charge density rho. Those are the three technologies, three key things which are looking at. Each of them has a way of handling it, depending on. So for example, here we, we, we are using this. Here we shall be looking at element, so it can be along the x, the y, or the z. So we shall only be having an inlet row over the line. Here, if it is a surface, it could be along the x and y. It is an inlet. So we shall be talking of either double inlet row over the surface s, or you can simply just use one. In a room. And here we shall be using triple in a room over the volume, tau, or simply you can say. So it's not a big, a big problem at the end of the day. Okay? See you tomorrow.